Aloha, it is day 28 of the Eat Local Maui Challenge where I am eating 100% locally grown, raised, foraged foods from the Hawaiian Islands for one month. And I'm gonna share some wild foods with you today, but I wanted to start off because I'm doing a little dye project with a super invasive plant called indigo. <laughs> it was brought here um, many moons ago to kind of try and create a, an indigo industry and that flopped and the plants just really spread like wildfire. They have these little crescent moon shaped seed pods. These ones aren't very developed here. I hope you can see those and little salmon colored towered flowers. And uh, so it is the leaves which uh, produce a color and it is a very unique dye process that um, is a redox reaction and I really just don't get fancy. I've never had much success with doing it the proper way and therefore the color that I get doesn't last very long and it's not super dark but I still use the plant to just kind of add some texture and a little bit of color. And so let me go show you what I've been working on. So I actually took the shirt that I had dyed with turmeric like a week ago, and I was like, well, I'm gonna see if I could actually turn it green by doing some bluish indigo on top of the yellow. So here's kind of what it looks like. I just take the leaves and just go ahead and put them into a pot and let them start to ferment. And I don't really do too much. I'll stir them like the first couple days. It's very temperature dependent on how fast they begin fermenting. Um, and it's a quite a stinky dye pot, <laughs> but there's no heat applied. And um, now I'll just show you as I pull it out and aerate it and just let the air, um, you know, make that reaction happen. And then I'll go ahead and give it a quick rinse and hang it on the line to dry and we'll see what we get. All right, so here's the shirt. It's completely dried now. And uh, it's not like popping green, but it gives a lot of contrast. I love the kind of textured print. Here's the back side. And yeah, breakfast is served. I got a beautiful Monstera and uh, the outer keys here. We're just peeling back and then I took a fork and peeled away this fruit between the inner core and have it on top of some yogurt with some of that Chiave, Magna Granola, some wild Jamaican vervain flowers and a gifted persimmon. So yeah. Monstera fruit perfection. The scales are peeling away. It's starting to ripen and you eat that flesh right there by taking a fork and peeling it away from the center core yeah a second breakfast here so we got some uh, cassava with rosemary and lots of garlic powder and some roasted cauliflower Mm -hmm. All right, so I was craving something crispy and delicious and so I dug some cassava root from the garden, peeled off the outside layer and then um, took this, it's called a mandolin and it's just like the essential tool to make really, really thin pieces. Um, this is great for pickling things. It's great. It has a lot of different great applications in the kitchen, but definitely if you're going to make chips, you want to get them as thin as possible. It's really, really hard to do uh, using just a knife. So I've got these thin pieces and I have some coconut oil in the pan and I'm just frying these up. And yeah, this is kind of the, the very end here. Uh, we've already eaten several, several rounds. Here's our uh, cassava chips. They're very crispy and delicious. 
Mm-hmm, they're yummy. What do you think? Good eating. Uh, what do you think of this local food challenge? Not good. Not good, why? Because then we have to stick to eating things that's only local. And what's not going like about that? Because I can have more shins. Oh, like what things do you want? Chippies. Well, what are you eating right now? Just put the chip from the store. Are these chips good? Yeah. 